You know what I don't think there's enough of on YouTube? Apocalyptic right-wing predictions for the breakdown of Western civilization. The society that we've built over thousands of years and the society that we've protected against tyranny and evil will come crashing down beneath our very feet. Luckily for me, professional Skeptotuber here, Think Twice, has managed to convince himself that the downfall of civilization will be brought about by the marketing strategy of a disposable razor company. And I can barely believe those are words that ever needed to be uttered by a member of humanity. Long ago, nature's doctrine of survival of the fittest decided that the most efficient way to perpetuate a species through reproduction and ensure its longevity was by dividing each species into two sexes. I hate to cut in so soon, but nature is a concept, abstract. It's not self-aware. It's not able to decide anything. And survival of the fittest? That was Darwin's doctrine. This division is seen across the entire animal kingdom. What can also be observed in all animal species and humans are the different roles inherent within each sex. With the exception of the male pregnancy witnessed in the Cynephidae family of fish, the young of all species are incubated by the female sex. It therefore makes sense, logistically, that females evolve to have behavioural and physiological traits that are conducive to the healthy development and loving nurture of their young. Don't get me wrong, I understand why you used this cute footage, but were bears really the best species to use to try and illustrate this point? Here we're about to get a lesson in the dangers of lazy filmmaking, relying only on stock footage and very badly researched talking points. The mother bear's fierce and heroic behavior saves her cubs' lives and teaches them how to someday fight like their mom. Females evolve to have behavioral and physiological traits that are conducive to the healthy development and loving nurture of their young. Obviously, it was also vital that the females never put themselves or their young in a situation of danger. Obviously, that's starting to sound a bit ridiculous now, isn't it? The most obvious thing should be that in nature, gender roles really aren't that clearly defined at all. So, evolution naturally put that onus on the other sex, males. Males developed a greater aptitude for physical strength and the natural courage to hunt to provide food for their tribe and women. The moms, led by the alpha female, are fully invested. Males developed a greater aptitude for physical strength. They won't give up their kids without a fight. So they could compete against rival males and protect their tribe from other, scarier tribes who had larger, pointier sticks. Eventually, young female bonobos must leave the troop and find another troop to accept them. The sons stay behind and the ones with the most powerful mothers become the most privileged males. You see, the real issue being that nature is neither homogenized nor uniform in the way that it expresses itself in its natural environments. So any attempt to compare human behavior to what you might be able to observe in the wild is ultimately doomed to failure. And if this is the jumping off point for the entire point of the rest of the video, then you've already failed on your own terms. Sure. Those traits were essential pre-civilization. But why can't we get rid of them today through the systematic emasculation of men? Because if we're talking about genes, implicitly, we're now talking about the evolution of genes. And what you see is, for example, patterns across different primate species. Some of them have evolved for extremely low levels of aggression. Others have evolved in the opposite direction and floating there in between by every measure are humans. Word to the wise, if you're gonna try and make a YouTube video using biology to underpin determinations of human behavior, you may wish to consult one of the world's leading experts in this field. So what has this gotten us to? Basically, what we're seeing here is, if you want to understand a behavior, whether it's an appalling one, a wondrous one, or confusedly in between, if you want to understand that, you've got to take into account what happened a second before, to a million years before, everything in between. Allow me to introduce Dr. Robert Sapolsky, a double PhD in primatology and neurobiology, 
and currently the professor for neurosciences at Stanford University. It's complicated and you better be real careful, real cautious before you conclude you know what causes a behavior, especially if it's a behavior you're judging harshly. Now, to me, the single most important point about all of this is one having to do with change. Every bit of biology I have mentioned here can change in different circumstances. Well, I just don't know who to believe now. On the one hand, we've got YouTube talkie man, Finky Twink. It's almost as if their biology compels them to adhere to their natural gender roles. Who believes utterly in uniform gender roles in nature? Boys will be boys. And on the other, we have Dr. Robert Sapolsky, who tells us that our biology is not deterministic in our inability to change. I failed miserably. At least you got one thing right. The next time, I need to try harder. Yes. Yes, you do.